The iconic Macy's in downtown San Francisco is now closing down. Is it more because of crime or is it because of e-commerce or both? Yeah, well, welcome to today's episode of Two Things Can Be True at the exact same time. Even though the internet is up in arms about it, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And there's multiple reasons for everything. We always stress on this channel that a lot of things are like a reason pizza. That reason pizza has different pie slices in it. So are we just arguing over pie slices? Right. Of course the crime plays a part. Exactly. Of course the negative retail environment. Like, you ever been in a Macy's recently? I have. Why wouldn't have. Amazon be better, categorically better than a Macy's? Uh, and a Macy's got no reviews. It just, like, is overpriced. Yeah. Amazon got better pricing. It's yeah, easier yeah. to return stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, it's an election year, and a lot of people are accusing both sides of having agendas. Wow. Well, let's talk about it. So what's the agenda? So let me guess. Let me guess, a lot of people who are saying it's due to crime, it's due to crime, they're kind of like anti-Democrat because a lot of people blame the rise in crime on the Democrats, right? Now, right. what what about the agenda of people being like, it's no, e-commerce. There's another element, though. There's another oh, what element. Is it? What is it? The more right side is also saying that SF has a very anti-capitalism environment, so they have a war on private businesses mm. in general, not just, like, just, not just loose on crime, but war on private business, like capitalism in general. I'll, I'll need more information on that perspective. Right. Of course, the other side is saying, well, all the Macy's are closing around the country anyway. Right. Which is... Because not it's just a busy. whack business. Yeah, they're just not that busy. I mean, I don't want to say they're a whack business. I think it's old school. I think that at the end of the day, you know, I did walk into a Macy's in New York recently. The one in uh, 34th Street. It's huge. Um, it is the biggest Macy's in New York City where they start the Macy's Day Parade type thing. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's just, it's not carrying the goods that people want and a lot of people are moving online and when you go online, you can find that very specific item that you're looking for. There's a lot of e-commerce brands that are not in stores that you just, the whole system of getting your brand into a Macy's is a very long and dramatic system too. So I think a lot of brands, are, a lot of your favorite brands are not even at Macy's. Obviously. Right. Um, a lot of people are saying that all the middle class spots, anything that caters to the middle tier will vanish, but luxury will stick around because guess what didn't close down in San Francisco's Union Square, Andrew? The luxury stores, mm. Tiffany's, Bloomingdale's or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, basically, it's like, because in the luxury experience, so much of it is going in there and getting the white glove treatment, mm -hmm. whereas middle-class stuff, it's very easily replaceable by the internet. Yeah, I think that once people realize they could buy a lot of athleisure and buy your T-shirts online for cheaper and it comes straight to your door, a lot of middle-class people are doing that, to be honest. So it's not really anyone's single fault. I mean, I think it's multifactorial, David. If I asked you, hey, David, How'd you arrive at the number 20? You know what you'd have to ask me? What do you mean? What's the equation? I got it. There's multiple factors in this equation that I, helped me arrive to 20. Five, You got three. to this result, but you don't know how you got here because there's multiple reasons. Right, right, right. All happening at the same time. Of course, like liquidity is down, so it's harder for these big businesses to access uh, big loans to like float them, to get them through, but they're probably just extrapolating the equation out. It's a losing thing, even if they can keep the whole thing going. Basically, somebody said, it all has to do with the way the government is squeezing poor people, and poor people have no more money to spend. That's why they're going out of business. We need to convert that entire Macy's into low income income housing and then somebody said low income housing doesn't pay any taxes and support the rest of society this argued into a bunch of you know you know everybody always arguing over how to distribute public funds right 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 um i'll say this that you know it's just like man it's such a complicated thing but low income housing sometimes or like i've been i've lived right next to a halfway house before and i'll tell you this a lot of the things that happen outside of the halfway house like on the street it's kind of wild yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just like. You wouldn't choose to live next to there. <laughs> I mean, no you one would. can just see some stuff because they get searched before they go in their doors. Um, somebody was saying it's all a plan to drop the real estate prices and have one company buy up everything. This is the, you know, the conspiracies, the Black Rock conspiracies where like they let urban decay happen so somebody can come up and buy up 
a whole city. Mm. So it's uh, well, that's gonna happen. I don't know if that's the reason why it happened, but that's definitely going to happen. Um, this last comment said, "Man, it's just such a shame. It really is iconic for a large national chain. It had a genuine local pres- presence. There are just no more third spaces." in America left for families to hang out. And uh, I'll tell you this, man, third spaces, which is like gigantic malls, outdoor shopping malls, iconic regions of different cities, uh, even like churches, they're not really like feeling like fun places to hang out anymore. And even if they're still fun, they might not feel safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's crazy to think about. Let me think, man. Our third space is going away, in my opinion. And, and the reason by, I bring that up is, let's just be honest, even uh, Joel Osteen, that famous uh, pastor, his church got shot up. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. And thankfully, I mean, they had security guards with guns, too. So, or, And the police came pretty quick. That was in Houston, I think. Every so, church, mega church, is like reviewing its security gun protocol right now. That's crazy. Yeah, which is sad, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I do think e-commerce was bound to increase. I do think the the pandemic sped it up, but then it was probably inevitable. And then crime surged. And then... It's harder to get liquidity, though, for the businesses, too. To yeah, flow. and then just ultimately, like... Oh, well, think about it, David. We're talking about th- third spaces for families. Well, guess what there's less of? Families. There's less people, less families. So if there's less people with kids in the city, because David, this is in downtown San Francisco. We already know in the cities, the birth rate's low. In the suburbs, the birth rate's still probably still going. But we're not talking about Macy's in the suburbs. We're talking about Macy's in the middle of the city. Who's going to go to the Macy's in the middle of the city? You know who lives in downtown San Francisco? If you can afford to honestly live in San Francisco, you're probably not going to shop at the Macy's. To be honest, you're not a Macy's demographic. Yeah, if you make like 250k and up, and then a lot of people seven. were saying actually all the Chinese tourist group used to come through and uh, yeah. buy everything up, but that's but, been obviously but, but heavily here, declining. Here's what I disagree: restaurants aren't going away. People still want to eat in places. Coffee shops are not going away. They still want to eat in places. But when it comes to shopping, yes, it is being affected. I mean, we got all these brands: 1587, Richie Lee uh, collection. I'm not buying stuff from Macy's. You don't want School of the Hard Did Knots. you buy that hat from Macy's? No, I did not. All right. Did you, the shirt, the beads, did you buy it from Macy's? It's an interesting, ominous thing. I'm but not- you can argue over the pie chart distribution, but I think you cannot argue that all the pie slices comprise the pie. All right, so I guess, is this even a worthy exercise for the comments down below to like break it down by percentage? Give us your quantitative breakdown between the crime, the bad macroeconomic environment and access to credit, and just people thinking Macy's is whack and going towards e-commerce. What's the split? Right, and I, maybe there's some other pie slices we're not even uh, Let me give you my split. I think it's 30% crime because I, if I think every, if everything else was banging, they'd figure out a way to secure the store. The e-commerce... I think is 40%. I think that's big because ultimately that's just the way technology it's a moves. better alternative product. Yeah, just like a lot of things are moving towards AI, this is just the way things move. Robot McDonald's. Yeah, this is the future, fortunately and unfortunately. Um, I mean, we have an e-commerce brand. This is an e-commerce brand right now. And then um, what was the other slice? Uh, 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 oh, just larger macroeconomic environment, like uh, the, the building costs are too high. Yeah, I guess that's, the other, that's the other 30%. So it's 30, 40, 30. Boom. Hey, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Iconic Macy's in SF closed forever 100 euro brand. Until next time, we're going to hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.